Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Uniform Crafts. Today I want to talk about reverse watercolor painting. I'm not talking about lifting or removing watercolor. That's a whole different technique that we can explore on a different day. What we're actually going to be exploring is this technique for adding layers on kind of in a reverse-esque fashion so that we build up a lot of depth in a subject. We'll be exploring it specifically with some fall themed leaves today. So grab your watercolors, some paper, and your favorite paintbrush, and let's get started. I'm gonna do this in this sketchbook that's pretty big. If this is your first time doing it, you might wanna do this on a slightly smaller scale because this can take quite a while. It's a pretty easy technique, but it does take some time and some patience. The sketchbook I'm using is an Arteza one, and I actually like this sketchbook. I do wish the paper was thicker because it warps a lot with watercolor. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some oranges, some yellows, whatever colors they are, that's totally fine. I'm going to just place them all around this page with some water as well. My goal is to get some color variation and to also just cover the entire page. This painting technique is really forgivable and we're gonna be covering a lot of this up. So if your background isn't great or there's streakiness or something you don't like, it's not a big deal. You'll just be able to plan your other layers around that. Cover the entire page and then dry this. Next up, we're going to be sketching out some maple leaves. And the key to this is we're gonna be sketching these out a bunch of different times in each layer. So we wanna leave some room in between them and we only wanna highlight a couple of these. The first leaves that we're drawing are actually going to be our foreground leaves. And then in every layer, we're gonna be drawing more leaves, which will fall towards the back. You'll see how this works in a minute. You could do this with a more simple shape of leaf if you're more comfortable with that. If you wanna do a maple leaf like me, they're kind of in three main segments and each one of those segments that shoots off, so there's a center one, it'll have three main points. Then at slight angles, you'll have another part that comes out with three main points and on the opposite side the same. And at the bottom, they have two little parts that dart out. The center will be the vein and the attachment point for the leaf. I kind of want mine to look like falling leaves or leaves in a pile, so I'm gonna make sure that I vary the direction that these are facing just to give them a little bit more movement and make them a little more natural. For my first layer, I'm only going to draw three leaves and you can see one of them was going off the page. We're gonna grab our watercolors again, and instead of just doing the yellows and oranges, now we're gonna to start to throw in some darker oranges and some reds, and we're going to be painting the whole background except where we drew. So everything on this page is going to be covered up except for the white space that's inside of the leaves. If you didn't like your background or parts of it, this is a great way to plan where you're drawing your leaves to only highlight the areas you do like because we're gonna be covering everything else up. Notice as I paint around all those shapes, how it kind of brings them to the foreground. Because we're gonna be darkening each layer of the background, we're gonna be pushing things that we're painting around up and we're going to be pushing the background back. We're kind of carving this in layers almost. Again, these layers do not need to be perfect because we're gonna be covering up a large portion of this in the layer that comes after this. So just get a nice coat except for where the leaves are. Make sure that you don't go too light because watercolor does dry lighter. So if you really wanna create a lot of depth between the layers, you're gonna to wanna to really kind of pump up the volume each time. We're gonna be working through different colors in order to kind of help us achieve that. Once you're happy with the coverage, go ahead and give this a good dry and we're gonna need to sketch again. In this second layer, I'm gonna make sure I overlap at least one of my leaves so that it really does look like one is behind the other. This will become even more apparent once we do put a darker layer on, but the one that's kind of going underneath the other one will look like it's further back because that first layer is the lightest, the second one is the second lightest, and then we're going to be darkening the background again. Make sure you leave a little white space in between these so that we can have more room for more layers going forward, but you could add a few more leaves in this layer if you wanted to. This is your painting, so you can do this however you want, but again, I'm trying to make sure that I vary the direction of the leaf to make it look a little more natural. Again, I'm gonna be darkening these colors again. I'm gonna be focusing more on the reds, and I'm also going to be throwing a brown oxide in there, which is going to dry even a little bit darker than when it first goes on. And I'm gonna be working in higher saturations because I want that background to really push down for this next layer, even though I'm using a lot of similar colors. 
whenever we layer color on top of other colors, it will kind of become darker just because we're getting a higher saturation. And the more you want a layer to be pushed back or pushed forward is how much you want to make sure that this actually gets darker. Or if you wanted them to be kind of similar, you wouldn't want to go quite as dark. Again, we're going to paint everywhere but places we have drawn those leaves. Don't forget about all those little nooks and crannies kind of around if you have things overlapping and you're doing maple leaves like this where they have a lot of little kind of triangles that can kind of sneak away from you. At any point during this, if you're bored of waiting for it to dry, you can start to add in some of the details on the leaves, the veins and the things that kind of go throughout them. You can make these super detailed. You could even try to really kind of mimic the crinkle of leaves and stuff. I'm not really going for a realistic style look for this. This is more kind of a fun sketch type activity for me. So I'm just gonna kind of create some loose gestures in them that hint to those things. At this point, I think you've got the hang of this. We're just going to be drawing in more leaves overlapping in some places. I might add in a few extra for this next layer because it's just farther down and I want a few more. Drawing them out until I'm kind of happy with their position and how many there are. And then I'm gonna go darker. So instead of using any sort of oranges, I'm just going to be doing the darkest reds that I have in that palette, plus some of that brown. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of that purple too. This does get a little bit trickier the darker and darker you go because you're adding more and more detail and there are going to be lots of little layers and little crevices that you have to get into. Remember, we have to darken all of those little gaps between our overlapping leaves if they're there for every single layer. So each layer filling it in can take a little more and more time. You can continue to do this until you reach a near black color. But this is where I'm gonna stop mine. I'm trying to do kind of a color transition through this sketchbook. So I don't wanna go any darker or it's gonna kind of mess up because I want this to mainly be kind of the yellows and the reds to fit into the theme of the sketchbook I'm doing. But this could be even more spectacular if I did this yet again, but then I added in some blues and maybe some blacks. Once you're happy with the saturation, you just need to go back in and fill out any of those details. Again, I'm just doing kind of gestural type things so that it feels like the leaves have a little bit of detail. And it's totally up to you. When you think it's done, it's done. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this negative or reverse watercolor painting technique and what you painted with it. If not, are you gonna try this? It's a lot of fun. You will need a little patience. This might be a good one to do one layer before you go to bed and then wait to do it the next day because it'll dry for you and you won't have to wait around as much. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to my channel and I hope that you have a magically creative day.